I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Today we're going to talk about a, um, a discussion I wanted to have with you guys about which is the most annoying destroyer out there to fight against. And when you see it, you're going to go, oh god, or you know, you get that reaction and and it really does shine, even in um, competitive and and ranked and so forth. But uh, let's talk about it today, and we'll take analyze it, and you guys make your determination of what you think, and I'll give you my my thoughts on what I think is probably the most annoying and probably the most powerful. But as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below if you're new to the channel. Appreciate watching and all the support. And if you really want to support us here, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, whatever bell button if you notified upcoming videos. It really helps us out and it helps us grow on our next. Uh, milestone will be 4,000 subs we're gonna do another premium giveaway so let's get right to it uh, I, I've only I think I've narrowed this down to about four destroyers and, and again this is caveat disclaimer um, I'm only focusing on tier 10 and maybe super ships and above I'm, I'm looking at that only right now because it seems like that's the most played right now uh, it's more enjoyable for me some people ask me why don't you play tier 8 or tier 9 I like tier 9 actually but most of the time ranked and competitive is not tier 9 and there's not as many selections in tier 9 for my personal taste. I actually enjoy the tier 8, as you can see in the background there, a lot more. And then uh, tier 8, it just seems a little slower. Uh, I think at the tier, 10, tier 10 and above, your your game pace is a lot higher. The ships are more fun. You get a lot more HP. And I feel like destroyers, since I'm a destroyer main kind of guy, uh, I find that I have a lot more firepower at my disposal to actually deal with these um, battleships, cruisers, and even, you know, so I have to run away from carriers nowadays and submarines. So uh, the Tier 8, although they're okay, um, they're fun to play with a little bit here and there. I think Tier 10 is just obviously more people play it. Tier 10 is a lot more fun, a little bit more faster pace for my liking, as well as you get more firepower. And that, that, those are the reasons I'm doing this. Uh, because tier eight, not, quite honestly, to me is a little boring, and uh, you just don't have enough firepower, uh, in my first opinion. Like for example, USS Kid, great destroyer, I love it. Just not enough firepower for my taste to do the kind of things that I'd like to do. So, all right, here we go. So let's take a look at the four. The first, um, there, I, I narrowed it down to four, uh, and I've pretty much got almost every tier ten. Let me know if I don't have something that you guys see here, but I think I got pretty much almost all of them. So uh, let's take a look at it. The one that I, um, the first one we're going to look at, and we'll we'll talk about what I think is is the the best and most annoying at the end is uh, let's start off with tier 10 Kabarovs. this was a premium uh destroyer i believe it is still in the armory uh let's take a look it is a uh, premium destroyer available for coal i believe let's take a look at it yeah and i've already gotten majority so i can't see the ones that have gone away Let's see here. It is yep, there it is. Coal, two hundred forty thousand coal. If you don't know what that is, um, so there it is. This is what it's available for. Premium uh, destroyer for coal. You can definitely go get it if you need to. The survivability is what I like it the most. Why it's so annoying. First of all, it's twenty thousand eight, twenty six thousand HP hit points, and then the other caveat here is it also has a super heal, specialized repair team, which means it heals a ton of butt crap uh, back. You can also switch it out for smoke generator, but I think where it shines the most is the healing. Why? Why is this makes it so annoying is it can't kill this damn thing. This thing literally every time you hit it, you think, oh, I got it down to half HP. Then boom, it pops its heal. It comes back like crazy. It also has this legendary upgrade, which is Master of Fire Control, which gives you a better reload time. And the range goes out to 10%, which is incredible. And then, of course, you uh, got the speed juking abilities of this thing, engine boost, as well as the maneuverability where you're literally, it's here, maximum, where is it at? Um, start to finish it basically accelerates and I'll take a look at it and again I hate third-party apps where you have to go look it up so if I go look up a cab Ross right now uh, I'm sorry I'm in the background looking up it's uh, juking ability acceleration 18.6 so acceleration literally from uh, acceleration time to 90% of the ship's maximum speed is 18.6 seconds so it's pretty darn quick and for what it does and it slams on the brakes accelerates back and forth and literally you guys have known if you've seen a cab Ross, it's out in the distance shooting it's running away from you it's kiting away it's coming at you it's firing a rapid reload I mean the reload isn't decent um, the reload on this thing is 4.1 and we get fearless brawler and everything else adrenaline rush going dude you're getting this thing down to the three second maybe two second time frame and it, especially when you're in games like arms race you're getting this thing down to ridiculous reload speeds and it's constantly lobbing shells at you, and the fire chance is incredible. 8% fire chance. The shells are coming out at 900 meters per second, and pens 22 millimeter armor. So this thing is a very, very viable weapon system. Very, very incredible. And let's take a look, a look at another annoying thing that this thing has. It has armor. My gosh, it has 50 millimeter armor plating, which means that the little destroyers that are fighting a gut against this thing, I would say the majority, bulk of them, 
A lot of their shares, shells, if you're not aiming correctly, will hit this 50 meter armor plating and will shatter. That's why you're kind of like, why am I not killing this thing? And a lot of the shells are hitting it and, and shattering. Now, obviously, the remedy to this is firing AP, but some of the times in the heat, the heat of the battle, in the thick of things, a lot of people get tunnel vision. They forget that, oh my gosh, I can switch to AP. What is this Kabarov's thing? So knowing what this thing is, and maybe you guys watching videos like this, and I've watched YouTube video guys a lot to learn about like what, what kind of ships are, are these things now that, okay, well, how do I go up against them? That's why I had to look up videos and study them and kind of figure it out. And again, that's another downside of World Warships. It requires almost like a PhD, master's level kind of understanding to kind of play the game to get really, really good. Um, rather than just jump in the game and start playing, which a lot of players are doing. But this requires you to actually watch YouTube videos or go online and study a little bit about this. Now, the bulk of the rest of the ship is 19 millimeter armor plating, 13 millimeter superstructure, so you can definitely aim and shoot there. Another downside is 12 millimeter guns. These guns shatter and break easily, so you got to think about that. But yeah, really, the bulk of this thing is really heavily armored, except for just certain sections. But that was makes this thing so annoying because it's running away from you. It's speeding. It's speed juking. It's dodging shells. And little DDs are just have a tough time trying to go up against the Cabros, and including that it's firing back at you. So that's one of the ships I had to look at, and we'll take a look at the video uh, as to see how this thing operates and um, what your thoughts are on that. The next one, uh, let's take a look at is the Kleber, Kleber, if you guys want to pronounce it like that. It's uh, French, of course, and here's Kleber, uh, Kleber, Kleber. Uh, I like Kleber better. Anyways, here it is, Kleber. Why is this thing so darn powerful? First of all, it's the freaking uh, French DD uh, problem where you are literally getting this French saturation. Now, for those of you who don't understand what it is, go YouTube, Google it. But basic idea of the premise of French saturation is each section of this ship is stocked with HP pool points for programming purposes in the computer work gaming world. So there's only a certain amount of HP or health points that are in here. And as soon as you hit it, boom, you take it away and boom, you're, you, you great job. You, you damage the ship. But now your shells, when they hit it, won't do the maximum damage that you did before because you've already saturated the ship. Basically, that's saturation. I call it French saturation. So as the more and more shells you put into this thing, you take away the HP. Well, yeah, great job. But then all of a sudden, your shells aren't doing as much damage as you would say to another destroyer that doesn't have as gimmick. So that's the first gimmick. And the next one is the speed. My gosh. Fastest ship in the game. You can see you can get this thing up to 55 knots with the engine boost because if you don't know, the engine boost, first of all, lasts a long, long time, plus 20%. So plus 20% of 46 knots, you're getting 55 knots in a speed boat. This is speed boat, um, go fast boat kind of mentality here where you're watching, literally going across the ocean like a bullet. And then you're also running around this French saturation armor, which is, makes you hard to kill. You also have the engine boost, which allows you to stop start, really roll juke shells. And you, just wiggling back and forth is also difficult to shoot this thing. And just sheer speed. I mean, people have sometimes a difficult time of aiming at the Kleber and shooting at it. So I think that's one of the biggest hurdles against it. Now, the other thing is really cool about it, makes it annoying, is the guns. Just like Kabarov's, this thing is another. The reason why I picked these is you notice that these things have four sets of guns. Uh, four turrets that are shooting a lot, a lot of shells that carries a lot, a lot of fire damage, which is like in this one, in this case, 10%. The last one we saw, Kabrovs, was 8%. And of course, these guns are pretty darn easy to aim. 840 meters per second come out of the barrel. Uh, the reload is a little difficult, I would say, 6.2 seconds. But if you build four, you can maybe get it down to maybe five. So the reload is okay, but of course, it comes with that reload booster, which is also scary for destroyers. This thing, man, it cuts your reload in half, and boom, it lasts for about 15 seconds, but that's enough shells to just put on target to really melt a small destroyer unsuspectingly, or... What you can do is use it where you're firing at range, which, look, 13.6 range. Uh, again, that's another thing I forgot to talk about. The range of the guns is also annoying. I mean, you have, like, for example, Kabarovs, where you're shooting out to 14.8 kilometers, which is pretty long range for the destroyer. And, of course, you also got Kleber shooting near about that 13.6. So it's reaching out there out of secondary range, out of radar range, and you're really just lobbing shells like crazy, and you're starting fires. And as soon as, for example, a strategy in Kabarovs and Kleber is, as soon as you see the damage con, I mean, that they put out the fires on the battle, ship their cruiser then all of a sudden they put it out the time is elapsed the lights stop flashing and that's your time to hit the reload booster or just massive start firing at the superstructure of that ship and start more and more fires and i've taught you guys hey uh you know and i've also learned that the superstructure is your first fire if they have fire prevention you can only start one which is this massive fire in the section here of course this is a club air usually you see these on battleships and then if you can get two fires which is the first one here and the first one here 
or second one here that is two fires in the superstructure which means they don't have fire prevention and of course you can the next spot is i always aim for the back because it's easier just aim for the the second this the aim right at this uh, superstructure center here and your shells will naturally just fall back on back here and you'll start a fire back here the last one i usually fire is at the bow and the bow will be where you start your last fire so four fires going on there again this is just a destroyer i'm just giving an example but usually you do those on battleships and cruisers and really, like I said, the club air is so annoying because of that start stop function. You can literally uh, speed boost and juke around this in the map like crazy at 55 knot speed boat. The French saturation armor is crazy. And of course, the guns are incredible with a really reload booster. Now, the downside uh, compared to the Kabaros is it doesn't have a heal. So any damage you do to this thing, again, it starts off with 29.59 if you build for it. You start off with that. And that's all you get. So what damage you get is that's that's the damage you're going to have to survive for the long haul of the battle. At least the Kalarovs can repair that damage and come back and fight and live and fight another day. So that's the downside of the Kleber. My next uh, destroyer I'm going to take a look at is the good old trusty Marceau. Now, Kleber was a tech tree, so everybody can grind it. Marceau is available in the armory still, and it is there for you to get it. I believe, again, it's for coal. So I definitely recommend people try and get in this thing. It is awesome. It's powerful. It's one of the most over, overly powered broken uh, destroyers in the game. It's the highest DPM in the game at this point of today's recording. And it still holds that uh, throne as one of the highest uh, DPM uh, destroyers out there. If you've ever played up against a Marceau, you understand what I'm talking about as a small destroyer player. The guns are the bread and butter of this thing. 2.9 second reload. And if you get Fearless Brawler, Adrenaline Rush, and AFT, you really are getting the uh, the, the sheer volume of firepower. Now, maybe down to two second reloads. So it is incredible what this thing can do. Uh, a little bit easier to aim up close and personal. Harder to shoot longer ranges. I, I built this thing off to 13 so it is that long range kind of spamming HE thing that's running in the back and shooting like crazy outside of secondary and radar range. But it is annoying, but a little bit more challenging to aim for. But you got to practice with it, lob the shells, walk the shells onto the target. It's still a viable thing. 7% fire damage, not at the highest as the other ships, as you saw earlier, but still very powerful because of the amount of shells that you're putting down range onto a target. So that is the most, uh, the, the biggest, uh, I would say, a pro, pro about this. Uh, going back to Kleber, torpedoes are for more up close. If you do legendary mod on Kleber, it, the, the, the Kleber has better torpedoes than them, uh, I would say, uh, for the Marceau because they're just faster, re high, better reload. That's my personal opinion. Marceau has okay torpedoes. I'm not saying they're, I think Kleber's are better because they're just more damage faster, up closer, and personal. The Marceau, the, the torpedoes are cool. Um, they're just only out to nine kilometers here, as you can see. It reloads a little more heftier, 142 per second, and they're 60 knots, so you get about eight second reload time, uh, reaction time. So, Marceau torpedoes are just there for just, hey, let me shoot them, see if I hit anything. Kleber is more up close and personal. You're going to rush a guy, you're going to basically YOLO, and then torpedo. I think those are a little bit better that way, a little faster. Um, what else we can talk about? Oh, yeah. The, the, another e the problem with the uh, Marceau, of course, you already have the speed. We already talked about it. So, look, speed, again, same as Colbert. It's an identical version of the Colbert, just better guns. The French saturation is built in like normal. And uh, really, that's pretty much it. I mean, it literally is good at juking back and forth, being annoying, sitting in the back. And if you can see, it is just spamming HE like crazy. If you try to attack this thing, this thing's going to spit right back at you. A lot of a bunch of hate. So very, very deadly at it, especially if you're a destroyer player. I mean, going up against a Marceau, you guys know, it's really deadly. And when I see one, I literally am going, okay, I'm not messing with you. I'm running away. You go fight somebody else. I'll go deal. <laughs> I'll go find somebody else to pick a fight with. So again, Marceau still up in my top uh, list there as one of the most uh, powerful destroyers in the game. The downside is it doesn't have the heals. If you're going to be a gunboat main, you're going to want to have some kind of uh, repairing of damage because you're going to take so much potential damage. So much people are going to, so many people are going to be shooting at you. And to be a gunboat DD, you need to have some ability to heal back the mistakes or errors that you make because you're going to expose yourself and you need to have something, I believe, my personal opinion that you need to have there to come back into the fight and last for the majority of the battle because you are out there running with your head cut off blasting everything you see inside so and of course um from the rest of the ships that i've played with uh another annoying destroyer and again this one's a close one it just inched over the line for me personally um i think it is actually can maybe hold a, um that category as most annoying ship in the game to play against is the Gdansk. Um, notice again, notice how I'm picking the ships with four sets of guns, four turrets, right? The downside of the Gdansk, the last turret there only has one barrel. So again, I think that is the downside of the Gdansk. However, I still think it's a very, very annoying 
destroyed a play up against. And we'll tell you why. One, it's it kind of like that Mogador. Look, I mean, you look at this. It's a pretty much like another French destroyer. Notice the caveat here is the majority of these are French. So we'll take a look at the Mogador. Look, here's, here's uh, take a snapshot of what Gdansk looks like, right? Here's Gdansk. There it is. Okay, let's take a look at what Mogador looks like. Where is he at? Here's Mogador. Okay, take a snapshot. And look, it looks almost identical, right? And essentially, the Mogador is cool because it has double barrels at the back there. The only downside is the reload is pretty long. Seven seconds as opposed to um, the little bit better reload on the Ganans. So let's take a look at it. Look, I, I switch back and almost identical. The reloads on the guns are way, way better. 3.3 seconds and you haven't even activated Adrenaline Rush or Feeler Sprawler. So why do I think this is pretty darn strong? Well, one, it's got great HP. I mean, it's 27,900. Pretty darn crazy for what it does. The armor's not there. Now, this thing does not get French saturation. So... That is one downside of this ship, but what makes it so powerful is the fact that it has a combination of smoke and radar, making it one of the most annoying ships to play against, because now it can just pop smoke and sit in it and then pop radar against the destroyer, and it just farms you like crazy all day long, kind of like the black kind of uh, play style. Uh, I don't know if there's another destroyer that does this. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, but again, this radar is crazy because it is nine kilometers. And if you build for it the way I've done, I built, I got the extra boost on it, to about plus 20%. So you got about a 12 seconds. So you can get about maybe three to four salvos, I would say, uh, into a destroyer. And the, the, the guns punch a lot. I mean, they hit you hard. You got four, bar four sets of guns on them. Uh, only seven barrels, but still seven barrels hitting you for 2,000 damage. Pretty, pretty darn powerful. Uh, yeah, it's annoying for destroyer players again. And again, here's the other aspect of it, the long range uh, side of it. 14.4 kilometers. I mean, you're sitting in the back um, lobbing shells and burning down battleships and cruisers like crazy. You're outside of radar range. You're outside of any kind of inside threat of torpedoes. And you're also outside of any kind of uh, secondary range. So you are literally lobbing shells not only from smoke, but also from a distance. And you can use the engine boost on it to speed juke as well. So uh, the way I play it, again, this is my personal opinion, the way I play for it, the engine boost is there, as you can see. It's annoying. Like, you can literally lob shells back and forth. I'll show you a couple videos, uh, or just show you the video in the, uh, when we uh, follow on on this. It's lobbing shells like crazy. It's launching them, and then when it wants to disappear, it can. It can speed you and, and dodge the shells. And, of course, uh, it's just doing it with the radar as well in the background if you need it. So as soon as it gets spotted, boom, it pops radar, and you're revealed as a destroyer. So you, I know a lot of destroyers outspot this thing, but, man, as soon as you detect it, boom, they pop the radar, and, boom, you're lit up like a Christmas tree as a destroyer, and this thing is lobbing shells at you crazy. Now, the counter of that, I've heard that basically you just nose into the Gdansk, wait for the radar to go down, don't shoot, just go be quiet, and then just live to fight another day. Meanwhile, the Gdansk exposed himself. Now everybody can take a shot at Gdansk, and I think Gdansk is actually easier to hit um, because look at the size of the damn thing. I mean, look at this. This thing is a massive, it looks almost like a cruiser. Look at the size of the dang ship. It is a lot heftier and bigger, bulkier, and it's easier to hit right, as opposed to it's like a Shimikaze or gearing. And that's probably the one downside of the Gans, but that's why as you play, you see me play it, I play it more of a longer range because I kind of try to eliminate a lot of the ships first off the bat. And then once the, as the battle progresses, they'll go in and later on mop up everybody else afterwards. But 14.4, uh, it also has torpedoes. And if you don't know, these are kind of like that Holland kind of torpedo uh, build where 86 knots coming out of it. And of course, I didn't build for torpedoes. It's not designed for torpedoes, but they're there and they go to 10 kilometers. So fast torpedoes, 10 kilometers, you got to be careful because they do come at you really darn quickly. Now, the reaction time is 6.9 seconds, so you do get somewhat of a reaction time because you can detect them. But, man, the speed of these things, man, they're coming at you pretty darn fast. The downside also of this thing is detectability is maximum as you can get it down to is 7.3 kilometers. So everything else spots this thing, but you don't care because it pops the radar, boom, you're revealed, or it's in the back shooting and spamming like crazy. So uh, we'll take a look at the gameplay videos, and those are my top four right there for in most annoying destroyers. I would have thrown the Druid in there but honestly the druid nowadays you can counter against it doesn't have torpedoes the smoke again if you have the smoke the radar can counter it and of course it only has two sets of guns which are easily damaged so i wouldn't throw the druid as although you guys have seen me play the druid a lot i think that it doesn't meet the category of most annoying um you know, just DD out there right now. I think, as you saw right here, that the ones that have four turrets that are speed jukers, they have a lot of guns, a lot of firepower, burning down everybody, and are throttling and juking and dodging shells, running away in the back, firing from long range. I think these are the ones that are really are the ones that just start a lot of fires on battleships and cruisers and are just so annoying to try to kill against. So let's take a look at the video, and uh, we'll, you make the determination of what you think, and uh, we'll see how it goes. 
All right, here we go. So this is the first game in the uh, Cabroffs. Let's take a look at it. So as I said, that the Cabroffs, very, very powerful tier 10 destroyer available in the army for premium. Why is this thing so powerful? Well, just look at the dang thing. It's huge. It's got a lot of HP, 26,000, uh, and it's pretty uh, darn good. The speed is pretty incredible. It can go pretty darn fast. The the uh, engine boost is good for juking. The guns are powerful, and, and this is arms race, obviously, so caveat here that it's not probably the best representation of what the ship normally does in randoms. However, it is in the game system. It is available, so it does increase the reload in some aspects of the uh, healing aspect or the uh, firepower. So very very strong so let's take a look at it, what it can do now look we're we're out spotted from the moon right off the bat we we know we're gonna get out spotted by shiva so anytime any shots we can take right off the bat as a good destroyer player eliminate the destroyer off the game because you're gonna increase your chance of success greatly by just eliminating one destroyer out of the game right off the bat so we're, we're kind of just playing lazy here we're not really pushing the the objectives or getting caps or getting uh, or the uh, power-ups what do you want to call it i'm just trying to take as much as hp off of this team of us as i can because i know that in the long run that uh, it's going to be difficult for him to come back because uh, he doesn't have any heals i know that and of course we also got everybody shooting at us now we got the holland shooting at us we got cruiser shooting at us We've got uh, Shima probably torping us. I mean, we got everybody literally in their mother. That's the greatest aspect of the Cabros I like about it, that you are the biggest distraction out there on the map. And literally everybody's firing at you. You're going to see the potential damage tick up so, so much. And then it's just constant firing at us. And that's good because, one, you're, just, you're, you're distracting the enemy from shooting at your teammates, which allows your teammates to fire... Um, at ease. They're not getting shot at. They're not in, under threat. Um, and they're really just hanging out. Look, I just took a full salvo from a Schlieffen right there. And look, it did nothing. It just scratched the paint, you know. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll smile right back at you and just fire, keep firing. And I, I dare you to come on and push on in. And that's what I want ships to do. I want to make them, hey, look, a juicy target. A Cabros. But little do they know what the Cabros is capable of, because otherwise they wouldn't push this thing. Because anybody that I've ever seen push a Cabros usually ends up dead. And I've seen that so many, so many games. I've, unless you guys have seen uh, somebody pushing a cab off that's running and kiting away it's firing at you I, I haven't really seen many people survive that engagement because why look the, sh the shalifan is currently being burned down by me he's getting shot from left and right his secondaries are cool little pea shooters i mean they have the best secondaries in the game but the problem is they're not they're computer automated and that means that i can just basically just by watching where the shells are firing i can juke the throttle back and forth back and forth and i'm going okay look see the secondaries are firing back now they're slowly adjusting the aim at the center of my ship so guess what i'll do i'll slow back down and then i'll also try to get those guns to shoot in front of me now and he's probably selecting somebody else see i don't see the their fi secondaries firing anymore unless he didn't build for him but look now he's on fire again so he is currently burning down he is down to oh my gosh like holy crap yeah he's just burning down now look he, he wasted all that energy firing at me uh pushing in uh, exposing himself now he's just burning them to death and he is look, look for the guns what they can do i mean they're taking about 1700 to 2000 damage every single time they hit and boom there it is flash one for the game and that ooh, torpedoes are coming out but look that's okay we've got our engine acceleration here and here we go we're also dodging shells as well look here baltimore's firing on us okay thank god the uh, the torpedoes went away so look Baltimore firing at me didn't hit us. Look, we're at 700 top right here. Look at the top right of my screen here. 739,000 potential damage. And total damage ammunition fired at your ship by enemy ships, and they missed. So they didn't really hit me, but uh, that is crazy. No, uh, let's push back in here. So now I can actually go back in the object. Look at my health. It's at 21,000. Very, very comfortable. And he goes down right there. Baltimore's taking out. Ooh, look. Ooh, oh my gosh. Where did this torpedo come from? Ouch. That's okay. I look at it, smile, and keep on going. Dude, this thing is the juggernaut. You punch it in the face, it's going to come back at you even more pissed off, and it comes back at you with a heavy uh, thunder and fury. Like there, we just started another fire on somebody right there. So you look at that. I'm healing. Uh, I could heal back majority of that damage that I just took right there, and it's going to just be ridiculous in the long run. But let's take a look at what we're going to do. So now we can begin to push in and take over the objectives here, which are these little power up and armored cap points, because uh, now we can, we, we've safely eliminated a majority of the ships off the map and they're pushing back away. Now they're running away. Ooh, we're spotted in. like I said, we're going to be spotted from the moon. So where is this guy? I don't have RPF. Of course I didn't build for it. Oh, here we go. Holland. Now the Holland at 20,000 health is going to pick a fight with the cab offs. Okay. This is his mistake. So very, very dead. Look at that right there. Taking off about 4,000 damage right there. Just full broadside, full salvo and right into him. 
and he just doesn't have enough armor and the hit points to absorb that damage. He's looking at 3,000 damage, and now he's turning into my gun, so that is not good for him, and if we just get a little bit better aim, can we nail this guy? And boom, there it is, splash two. He goes down with another destroyer taken off the map. Oh, and do we have another guy that wants to play with us? Here we go, Shimakaze. Uh, a little puny Shimakaze wants to pick a fight with a cab off, so not probably the smartest decision you could probably make, but oh well. He thinks he can take us on with 7k health. He is in smoke. Okay, so look, he's look, firing at the Cabaros with p little pea shooters. Uh, it's annoying. I'm telling you, it's hard to kill the Cabaros. I'm telling you, it is insane what this thing can do uh, and keeps you alive. Uh, you know, survive and thrive. That's what I always say. And just keep on surviving throughout the, the long haul of the game and you will win. You just got to play a little smartly here. Now, Shimakaze in the smoke. He has nobody spotting for him. No radar within range. Stalingrad's outside of the 12 kilometers. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to push this guy. So let's see. He's got me spotted. He texted me from the moon. But the problem is he has to fire. If he fires at me with his guns, because his torpedoes are probably on cooldown. If he fires at me from his, with his guns, he's got to expose himself. There is another shot that's missed. Again, great at juking and dodging shells. And now the Shimakaze is in a bind here. What's he going to do? Oh, he left the smoke, and here we go. 7,000 HP to my 7,000. Not probably not an equal fair match right here. Our guns reload a little bit faster. They're, they fire a lot better, a lot more damage, and we get help with another shot right there in Splash 3. He goes down. Another Destroyer eliminated. So, like I said, the way to go, Conquer, for supporting your teammate right there. But, man, that was an intense gun battle over on the eastern flank. So let's take a look at what this thing can do now. Um, now all I can really do is uh, heal up and maybe spam HE from a distance. Now I have to get maybe this North Carolina out to maybe even the match. A lot of our ships are down, and they're not capping upon, uh, the, the spot for us. Now let's see who's a bigger threat here. Who is the uh, North Carolina going to fire at? That's a, a Conqueror or a Cabros? That tells you right there enough. If he fires at me, that tells you we are a bigger threat to uh, him than the, can the Conqueror. Think about that for a second. Look, he's going to fire at us with AP. He's going to take a shot at it. That means I honestly think that the Cabros is so darn powerful. And he, look, wonks the shot. Because this thing is hard to hit, man. And it's kiting away. So, so difficult right there. And we take another miss right there from the stalling guy. So they're, not, they're getting frustrated, so they give up. So now what we're going to do is just sit here and throttle back and forth. I, I feel that 11.4 to and on to the 14 kilometer range is a very comfortable spot for these guns to hit yeah, the superstructures of battleships very very good very strong uh, back turret right there uh, let's see if he can hit us hopefully it doesn't affect us nope bupkis and we are at 1.3 million potential damage look at that up there 1.3 million damage and we are taking up more damage 123,000 damage at this point late in 10 minutes in the game he takes another shot at us eventually one of these shells, shells is going to hit us so i mean we can do only do so much throttle juking back and forth eventually the player will start learning our pattern and seeing okay where is he stopping where's he starting there he finally gets one right there so unfortunately we don't have any more heals and we got the engine boost available it's back on now so let's go ahead and start okay he gives up finally see the, the other aspect of the defensive measure people don't think about is cab is so annoying that people just get frustrated with it and just leave you alone so that's another defensive measure where people just give up on you. <laughs> I, I didn't think that was actually the case of some ships, but the Kabarovs holds that um, pretty, uh, uh, that, um, that uh, I would say, reputation for, I just don't want to deal with this guy anymore, uh, stop shooting, because I'm wasting a lot of my shots. Remember, you can only fire so many shots in the amount of time as a battleship player. And uh, yeah, it's annoying. So let's take a turn around the avenue here, and we'll come back and see if we can eliminate. Okay, let's start. Uh, oh, we, we can take out a Schlieff, and that would be really great. Again, I'm losing teammates left and right. Ooh, finally Stalingrad, and we got the North Carolina fine. So we got everybody and their mother fine on us now. Stalingrad has a little bit more accurate guns, so I'm a little worried about him. But if I can take out one of these battleships, it'll help out the team a lot. And there's another wonk shot. And we start a fire. Hopefully the Schlieffen dies because of that. Oh, man, I should have fired on the Schlieffen one more time. That, that was my mistake right there. I should have fired more and get another fire going on him. I mean, just look at this thing. It's firing and fires left and right, and everybody is shooting us now. They're like, look at the Kabarovs. He is way more deadlier than anybody else in the game right now. That's why three ships are firing. Now we got the Kutsnov uh, activated. Now, oh, and we take a hit from North Carolina. That was my fault right there, but we did distract three ships away from the center there, and we do end up winning this game. Uh, there goes the Schlieffen. He goes down. Uh, Stalingrad's going to take a beating. Boom, 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 boom. He goes down. I believe. Yep, he goes down. Stalingrad goes down, and then the Druid comes back around and wins the game. So if you guys want to see that here. Yeah, and basically North Carolina. We wielded the North Carolina now as much as we could. And North Carolina comes back in the game. Let's see here. So, again, the Cabaros, so powerful. The fact that we were able to impact the game so much right there, and now we just give the, the uh, Druid 
ability to clean up and mop up. And even though he got his health back, but man, he had to work for it. We made the whole entire Eastern flank work for it. So that's the power of the Cabros. I'll go ahead and speed it up just to get this thing over with. But yeah, we win the game. Yay, win the game. So let's take a look at the next uh, destroyer here on the lineup and uh, see what you guys think. All right, we got the good old trusty Marceau, probably one of the most uh, powerful OP ships, uh, destroyers in the game with the highest DPM and mini destroyer. And uh, let's take a look at what this thing can do. Look at the speed of this thing. Uh, just so that that's probably the biggest pros about this destroyer is the speed. Look at that. Just without engine boost, 46 knots. And then when you pop the engine boost, boom, you're going to just big zoom around the map like a, a go fast boat, speed boat. And, and just be an annoying presence. And here we got the submarine. I don't like submarines, whatever. Yep, just pushing the objective. Let's see what we're going to do. We're going to go flank and see what we can do over here. Okay, now we're going to start uh, gun, running and gunning here, right? I mean, the gun relo gun reloads are amazing, and it's super, super annoying. Uh, the arcs, you can see right there. Look at the arcs. They're really... Man, you got to work on it and practice the, the aiming of this thing because they are a little wonky and a little bit harder to shoot, as you can see, compared to the Kabarovs or maybe other ships you're going to see. But man, do they pack a punch when they do connect. I mean, you're taking about 2,000 damage off of a, a destroyer, uh, I'm sorry, cruiser, and you, we know, we already know what's going to happen if you go against a, a destroyer in the Marceau. I mean, you're going to melt that thing, but yeah, even just at this comfortable 11 kilometer range, it's very good, very decent. Look. His shells are hitting us, but, I mean, not doing too much scratch in the paint. And then we start a fire. I mean, that is the power of the gunboat, run and gun, hit and tactics. And, uh, man, this thing is ridiculous. Now, here we go again. We're going to go against another cruiser player here. And let's see if we can nail him. I'll kind of give you a little bit better viewpoint here if I minimize the map. Yeah, pretty... Um Pretty darn powerful, I, I would think. Like the the power of the Marceau and the Colbert. I mean, this French saturation makes it so hard to destroy and hit. And and then the guns are fast reloading. They start a lot of fires, and you really just run around the map. And it gives you that flexibility because of the speed. It gives you the flexibility to run around and, and just be that nuisance. And you can respond to the threats that just start appearing on the mini map. That's why I would say blow up the mini map as big as you can, so you can see where you're needed as a shorter player because you're always going to be needed somewhere. Uh, because you're literally the leader of the game. I mean, you are the one going out and capping, spotting, killing destroyers and, and um, maybe even submarines sometimes. But then you're also distracting. And that's the other thing. You want to wear down the enemy so bad to the point where they give up. Like, they're, they're going to start... If you start seeing players start turning away and kite away, you know when they've given up. They just don't want to play in this area, especially with the presence of a destroyer. Look at all my... Look at my, where my battleship and cruiser are. And this is another problem of the game. People are just running on the back of the map nowadays. I, I don't understand the gameplay style anymore. Um, it's just so dumb. It's just passive. It's, and I've, used, I've heard that word used a lot. Passive. And you should never hear a game that says it's passive. I mean, that's like saying Call of Duty's passive or um, a chess game is passive. Whatever. I mean, this literally is the state of World of Warships. And I might do another video about that. Is this game too passive where it's just become so mundane and boring that nobody wants to play anymore because why join the game you're just going to run the back of the map whatever i digress with ships like the marceau i can understand it because you're so darn annoying look i mean he's firing like crazy but is he connecting is his are his efforts actually worth it i mean i'm already up to four hundred thousand potential damage at the top right of the screen right there and i'm doing more damage to him than he is to me and it, he's just like oh man this is oh, this is terrible and look he's running to the back of the map now to back to his spawn that's how annoying this thing is and it is very very powerful and destructive and especially with the way you can build this thing out to long range gun builds uh very very dominant force and we got up we're up to 478,000 potential damages and i think that is another aspect of the game is just judging the potential damage look he hit me and it scratched the paint i smell right back at you and i'll come back at you even harder so the potential damage of what a, a, a destroyer can do is a, probably a good gauge as to how annoying now, because everybody's firing at you. The more people firing you, the more annoying you are. And the more that they're missing, the more annoying you are. So let's take a look at Look, we're quick responding here. We're running all the way back to the map here. We're also going to do our, our primary role is to go in and cap the objective. So that is hunt destroyers and cap the objective. So let's take a look at it there. Yep, we run in the middle. We go cap. And now we are back in the center. Let's see if we can take on somebody else in the middle here. We're also going to sit here and cap and uh, very, see, look, quick response. Look, our, we're the only ones really doing the majority of the bulk of the work here in the center in that alpha. We're going to cap the middle point right here while everybody's being spotted running. The, look at the team. Look at the enemy team. They're running to the back of the map. I don't get it. 
This, this is just the weirdest thing. Again, you can be very, very annoying, very threatful. Okay, here we go. We got an Austin. Very deadly ship to go against to take a risk. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Our DPM should be able to nail this guy and kill him before he he swings his guns to us. Hopefully, his guns are still not turning. Look, we're being fired at by somebody. So I'm throw, playing around with the throttle and the juking of the throttle. And do we get this last shot here? Do we kill him? Oh, we almost got the kill. No, we didn't. All right, we did our job right there. We killed Austin with our team at Alpha Bravo. We got the pretty much the, the cap points. Now, they got to push us, and guess how much more annoying we can be. We're going to go ahead and shoot the Takashi again. He is probably annoyed by us right now, so let's see if we can focus and weather him down. Look at that, 1,800 damage. I mean, not bad. Now, I've got the Schlieffen off my left, but hopefully they're being he's being busy with the Zao and the Thunderer, so it's good to know a mini-map, a situational awareness there. So now we're going to go ahead and do our kiting also routine. He's kiting away. I'm kiting away. And yeah, nothing was solved there. I mean, it's literally uh, let's run to the back of the map. So only other guy that we can be a really threat to is the Schlieffen. So let's so we can burn enough uh, off the Schlieffen here. Notice this is almost a blowout. The half of the enemy team is pretty much half of them are dead already. So we lost a Thunderer right there. That was bad because the Schlieffen burned him down. And here's where it shines right here. Here's where the firepower just starts kicking in on the Mars. So, I mean, look at all the shells raining down. Love, this is the other aspect of the game I like is just the peaceful and calmness and the therapeutic aspect of left clicking and just watching the shells rain down like uh, rain, steel rain. And man, it is just one hit after the next 900, 600, 900. Now we got a boost of the Fearless Brawler Reload, and we're just nailing it one by one by one. And here we go. So much firepower. He's at 22,000 health right here. And he's just getting nailed left and right by shells and torpedoes and from submarines. I mean, he's going, he is not having a good day. I mean, there's another one. There's another fire going on over there. Let's see if our firepower can get it. I mean, we're just kind of loitering in Alpha, just holding our fl our flank and making sure they don't overrun us. We've got all the caps, and this is why it's so annoying. I mean, you got a Marceau guarding the whole area, and he's just spamming you for HE for free because nobody's spotting me. And let's see. Oh, he's down to literally 2,000, 1,900, Does he take a shot before he dies? Oh, unfortunately, he doesn't get a shot off. So that was one aspect right there. 918,000 potential damage right there. Look at that. And it's still taking up 925. That is a lot. If you get to that million potential damage in Destroyer, you are doing a lot, a lot of damage. So let's take a look. Let's move up here. Uh, who else are we taking out? The Thunderer? Yeah, why not? Oh, Vampire. Here we go. Let's see if he shows himself again. Uh, vampire is a, a great, great destroyer. I like the Vampire a lot, but unfortunately, the Marceau just packs so much more firepower in a punch. AA is okay with the uh, Marceau. It's got the defensive fire AA, but AA is trash. I mean, they did something to this thing to nerf the AA on Ds and everything else, so I really don't care much about it. All right, Thunderer, what is he looking at? He's looking at me. Yep, I am a big threat to him, so I'm instead of the Bungo, he's going to probably shoot at me. So let's uh, throttle Juke in a minute here. So there it is. Throttle juke, slam on the brakes, and let's see if we can dodge these shells. Where are these shells going? And yeah, bupkis. So again, one million potential damage right there, and he's kiting away. Yay. So we're not going to take an objective. We're going to fire for fun and then run away. That is the nature of gameplay today. And it's, I'm not blaming the player. I'm just blaming the nature of the game because it's become so keyword passive. Yes, keyword, ladies and gentlemen, the word is passive. And Unfortunately, Marceau and, as you saw previously, Kabrovs are not allowing the game to be enjoyable anymore because people are just annoyed by it. And missing shots, missing shots. Yep, 1.2 million damage now. Oh, and here we go, Vampire. Would like to play with us, and I don't want to pick a fight with a Marceau. I've tried it. It is difficult with the amount of DPM and gun power. It is difficult to go up against a Marceau. Too much firepower right there, and let's see if we can nail this game, let's kill the game. Get this final kill. Come on, baby. Come on, one more, one more hit, and boom, there we got the kill right there. So <laughs> that's Marceau right there. You don't pick a fight with it, and so, so darn powerful. There's the stats for the game. Yep, number one in the team because we went around and did everything. So cap the spots, kill destroyers, kill battleships, just kept everybody out of the cap, and uh, just they just did not have a good time. One million potential damage, as, as always. So let's take another look at another ship uh, that we also uh, have selected. All right, so we have the next game here, which is uh, Gdansk. And again, caveat, this is arms race, so obviously a little bit more exaggerated uh, capabilities uh, with the heels and the reload. But man, does this thing, uh, this thing is a spammer, I'm telling you. So it is up there with a lot, that annoying destroyer roll, and you're going to see the amount of fires, um, maybe even potential damage. 
Okay, so we got right off the bat, we already got the buff. So let's open up on this Baltimore. Now, here's the annoying aspect of this right here. What's the Baltimore going to do? The Baltimore literally is just going to sit there and take it. That's it. That's the strategy here. We're going to go in reverse. And what are you going to do about it? And there's one fire. The first of many fires, mind you. So uh, some, again, like I said, this is therapeutic for me. I mean, just literally just lobbing shells over and over again. And the reload rate and the, the DPM, the reload rate is what really shines about the dance because it's a Mogador with a, literally like a Mogador, but with just constant reload. And you're, it's just so annoying to deal with. I mean, you are literally, what are you supposed to do as a cruiser player? You're just going to sit there and take it. I mean, boom, he's done. I mean, he couldn't have done anything. Uh, reversing wouldn't have done anything. Driving forward wouldn't have done anything. And I understand that's what's causing the game to get broken. The game is going to get busted because it's become, quote unquote, like I've said, passive. Nobody's going to push. Everybody's going to sit in the back. People are going to get bored of a game that doesn't uh, just uh, allows you to accentuate the, the capabilities of the ship. And now you're just kind of like, look at this Montana. What's he going to do? Run away. At least the rubric on my team is pushing and he's having fun, right? And that's what's actually, I think, I don't know. It, it's does This game isn't inspiring that anymore. Uh, I thought like the mode shuffle and brawls and everything would have brought it back. Unfortunately, people are just too scared to risk their ship for some reason. I, I think we need to do something about it. I don't know. Wargaming is going to make things worse or better by with subs and CVs. I don't know. I mean, it, it just seems like the game is slowly dying. It's making the warships not warships anymore, where it's just... If you pick a warship, you're going to get burned down to death, or you're going to get torpedoed to death, or you're going to get aircraft carriers to death. I mean, it literally is just that annoying that nobody wants to play the game as it was intended anymore. And now it's just a lot of... That's why I like destroyed roleplay, because you can be more uh, impactful and effective, and it's just more enjoyable. I mean, the reloads uh, on the battleships are cool, but the, cool, the gun sounds are awesome. I get it. But look what you can do in a Gdansk, or a, a Marceau, or a Cabros, like you've seen. I'm just having fun lobbing shells. My reload is allowing me to play a little bit more of the game and throw a lot more damage downrange, as opposed to waiting 30 seconds or even, God forbid, a Vermont where you're waiting 40 seconds or whatever it is, and then you're just, just waiting to shoot and letting everybody burn. You're literally sitting there as a sitting duck for 30 seconds letting someone burn you down. It, and that's why this gun, this ship is so annoying. We're already at 343,000 potential damage in the Gdansk in the first five minutes of the game. And now look what we're doing. We're just going to go ahead and continue spamming a backwards going battleship, which I don't understand why this is a strategy, uh, but it is. And there's one fire right there, another fire. And again, somehow this is enjoyable to people. This is reversing in, uh, in your spawn going behind a mountain. What does that solve? I don't know. He's going to fire at us again. Hopefully playing the lottery here. He's going to fire and oh my gosh, am I going to hit this thing? And yay, I did one little damage. I'm out to 513,000 513, potential damage now. And look, another person shot in Bupkis again. Again, an annoying aspect of long-range DD spamming ships. So very, very powerful, very strong. And uh, like you said, wasting shots on me is good for my team. So let's take a look at... Okay, that's, oh, we're shooting the Gdansk. Another counterpart. So we can eliminate him from the map, and that'll be good for our team. So again, the shells are okay trajectory-wise. You can see they're not as lofty as the Marceau, but a little bit easier to aim at. I'm just kind of just judging, engaging, and we get a nice hit. And another fire going on him. Let's see, did he damage con that one? Yes, he did. So he damage conned it. Let's see if we can get back into the game. Let's kill this Gdansk. Let's get him out of here. Okay, we got torpedoes in front of us. Always keep in mind the torpedoes. Let's take another shot at the Gdansk. Again, your primary role is the destroyer players. Get the objective first and kill all destroyers. Those are the pro top two priorities right there. Get them out of the game. And, oh, here we go. And here we go. The problem with the smoke of the Gdansk is you have too much speed and it takes too long to actually slow down. So by that time, everybody's going to fire you. And there's our first kill, splash one. And here's another destroyer. We're going to also lead. And again, the guns are powerful. These are Mogador style guns. And you got double, four sets of them. And the course caveat is the back turret only has one barrel. And look at this damage. Oh my gosh. 1900 damage is unsustainable as a destroyer, especially Shimakazi that does not have any heals. And he's down for the count. Ohio takes another shot right there. And now we are literally map control. We've got the entire center of the map. And look, we haven't even used our radar yet. So the radar is there as a, just a novelty, as like, hey, I need to spot the guy spotting me. And pretty much that's it. And now here we go. Here's where we shine right here. 
12.7 kilometers away is a very, very comfortable range to be shooting at, especially at the, for a Gdansk or Mogador or kind of a Kleber player. It is just comfortable where you can aim and be comfortable of hitting the center, center superstructure and start fires. You can see the damage what this thing can do, and there's a fire right there. Again, another fire, and we've got the smoke to cover us. Again, an annoying aspect of the ship. Sitting in smoke, spamming HE, and there's nothing that the battleship player can do it. I do about it, and he's going to run to the back of the map. And of course, we got another battleship that wants to play with us. We got the Brandenburg. Unfortunately, the Brandenburg is not as heavy armored as uh, most tier 10 ships. It's a little bit lower tier. So great secondaries, unfortunately not. Uh, and that's why I like tier 10 destroyers, because I can now pick battles up against a battleship, even if they're tier 8 or whatever. It still gives me the ability to pack a powerful punch and make an impact in the game, as opposed to a tier 8 player. Uh, versus the Brandenburg. It'd be an unfair fight because the Brandenburg would outgun me. So here's one fire right there, another of many. And our goal was to start two fires in the center, center superstructure if he doesn't have fire prevention. So like I've always said, the center is your your friend. You want to aim in the center. And if I can get a, uh, a fire on the back, there's another fire right there. Now I'm going to aim at the front. I'm going to try to start a fire on the bow. So I'm going to lead the shells a little bit more forward there and try to hit the bow of the ship and try to get a third fire because that would just tick his passive income damage even so, so faster. That's why I like about fire damage because I don't have to hit the ship and it's still ticking damage down and he can't do anything about it and he's just waiting for it to be on cooldown or uh, damage con to come back now he damages con so now we can switch back to the superstructure and do a little bit more effective damage so 3,000 health not a problem for Gdansk coming right up he's gonna go to the bottom and boom back to the bottom ground floor back to port he goes and that is second kill right there 681,000 potential damage and now we got a Slava so let's go ahead and stay in our smoke and be that annoying player again What's he going to do about it? Oh, now we are... Oh, our smoke is now going down. So, yep, hey, we are out of our smoke. We are full health uh, Gdansk. 36,300 max damage right there. Ridiculous. And now we have torpedoes as well. Again, his guns are way too slow. They're not doing enough uh, damage to us because they're just on cooldown. And he fires at the mountain. And then, <laughs> there he goes. That actually counts as potential damage, I believe. He fired at us and missed. So, it's 865,000 damage. And we took that with grace. Somebody else is firing right behind it. Oh, but he's trying to hit the uh, Brisbane right there. I'm sorry, Brisbane. I think I was slowing you down right there. Oh, that's uh, Gramster03. Uh, shout out to you, by the way. You're a very nice person. You you're, Look at the Merc messages. Uh, uh, or sorry, the... Um, the uh, Sorry about that, Brisbane. But Gramps right there in Belch Clan. Uh, sorry about that, but you were a nice player. You were talking inside of the chat and being a very nice, good player. And I encourage that, guys, if you can make this a better place, make it friendly, very welcoming. We're, ha we're all friends here. We're all having a good time. Uh, we're just having an enjoyable game. Uh, and uh, World of Warships. So let's make it a better place, as always. So shout out to him. So let's go and see if we can nail the Montana. So let's see here, Montana superstructure firing. Let's see if we can nail it. Very easy to aim, leaving at 13 kilometers. And look at this, we're getting nice hits right there. And hopefully we get, and boom, there it is, splash three, another kill for us right there. And we are the only one guarding the center of the map. Notice that's why destroyer players are so powerful because we are literally doing everything. We are killing battleships for you. We're killing, now our turn is to kill this, the cruiser player. Now we are capping the spot as well. We're also spotting and killing all the destroyers. So we already eliminated all the destroyers. So it makes our life easier. We're also capping all the objectives, which is capping the objective and taking the power up. So we are doing every, there's another fire. Let's see if we can get another one going. Again, cruiser lighting, uh, lighting a cruiser on fire is also enjoyable because I don't think they can build for fire prevention. So, and there's another fire. If I can get four fires on this guy, that'd be so cool. Let's take a, let's minimize this so you can see how we're aiming here. There's a confederate. We are getting so, so much damage here. And another fire getting right there. So let's see if we can get a... Let's see, he's got three fires. Let's see if we can get a fourth one. He doesn't have to, He doesn't have fire prevention, so let's see if we can get another one. Look, I'm just naturally just aiming right in front of him, putting the 10 and the 12 on him, and let the shell, let him walk into our shells. We've got a heal buff, and we've got the, uh, the HP, so we're not too worried. He is getting nice damage on us, though, because... He is um, a little bit more better, a little bit better reload on the Hindenburg. He's got a little bit better accuracy, so he knows he can aim if he just does the full salvo shot right there, full spread. So, not bad. And we're getting a lot of. There's another fire. We got one point, almost 1.4 million potential damage, and we're still racking up the damage on 134,000 damage in the last, um, in the first, thir in 13 minutes of the game with seven minutes left. Let's see if we can nail him. And way to go, Stalingrad. Any Bubkiss misses that last shot. Look at that. 1.44 million damage. Redonkulous annoying. How annoying was that to play against like a dance right there? So that's pretty much uh, the rest of the game, I believe. Uh, yeah, we win this easy. Um, yep. And capping all the points, capping the objective. 
And we'll just run it out to see where I go after this. Yep, going against a Giuseppe Verde. Not sure what he was planning on doing, just running the back. And, um, yep, yeah, he'll just probably just uh, ram the North Carolina here, and we'll call it a day. But, man, look at that. Another fire. Look at that. 16 fires. Holy cow. Now, I can understand why this thing is annoying. 1.4. We hit the 1 million potential damage mark, so we went beyond that. So, very, very annoying right there. 143,000 damage plus is still ticking up with three kills and another fire. 17 fires. Oh, my gosh. How annoying can that be right there? So, he, uh, Gdansk, actually, um might be up there pretty high up there we'll take a look at another video and see how it goes but here are the stats of the video getting confederate holy crap 26 or more ships damage with 20 percent and see how we did number one on the team yep very good very very powerful look 17 fires my goodness all right so let's take a next look at the last ship uh, in the lineup all right we're back with the uh club bear here and this is sleeping giant and everybody's favorite map of course with this little crazy little island uh, chain right there but let's take a look at this how it actually plays out so let's take a look at club bear cleaver or whatever and everybody's favorite fast gunboat destroyer this thing is wild this thing is another marceau style uh destroyer with 55 knot speed look at the engine boost going off right off the bat what makes it so annoying is it's fast because it can go in and take the objective so quick and you run in there and you just just cause a havoc and and then when you go up against it it's hard to kill because of that fresh saturation that we talked about and the guns are big they got 139 i believe 130 what 139 millimeter guns that uh, again you got the engine i'm uh, sorry not engine um reload booster so it brings the guns down 50 percent reload so you are getting half the reload of what it normally has but even then the six point second reload is not so bad that you can't deal with it uh, it is still viable and again we get radar right off the bat right there So I already know we we're gonna get radar. So we got the engine moves ready to go and look at how annoying everybody's trying to shoot at us Everybody and their mother's shooting. Like, let's see how, how how much potential damage can we tick up right here? So we got 120 132,000 shot at us so far uh, right off the bat. Yep 132 so that was that so uh yeah we did our job we just went in there and stirred up the hornet's nest and now we're gonna go and go somewhere else where we're more useful so look how fast we can maneuver around this map here we're gonna go to alpha we started in the northeastern side of the map and look where we're going right now we're gonna go all the way into alpha and uh support team again i hate uh, submarines i don't know what they're doing right there whatever go play your own thing go play your own game you're in space here we go. We'll take on the Holland and help out our Mech, uh, Mecklenburg. And again, the bad downside of the, the, the Clubair, the gun turrets are really, really slow to turn. So right now I only got the front two turrets. But once I get the other four turrets on the line, then we can start you know, activating the engine, or sorry, the reload booster and start limiting. Now the guns do pack a punch. I can only pick this fight because I knew the Holland's heels were down. He is slowly dying. And now we got the reload booster going. And here's all four guns connecting right here. And there's just nothing. The Holland just can't absorb that much damage right there. That's a lot of firepower. And he goes down for the island. We get a fire damage con that right off the bat. Always save the damage con until the last shell is fired because that way you know you can damage that fire so you don't lose health. So right now we're not going to pick a fight with the Conqueror. We're going to go back around. Again, this is another aspect of the Club Air, being able to go around and cap everything and go around secure objectives and you literally race around the map with your head cut off and just getting all that damage in. Again, we can't attack. We're not gonna attack anybody head on right here because it's just not worth it. You know, we don't have the health, nor do we don't have any regeneration, no heals. So that's the downside of the Club Air. Once the damage t hits you, it, it, t it sticks. So it, you have to figure out how to play smartly. Uh, with it and you really you are just the fast gunboat that runs around with its head cough there's i've tried to get a little bit more games where i'm showing the capabilities of the guns where i'm kind of he spamming but it, it's still a little bit hard um to do it because the reload's so long i elected not to fire at the Hiragumi here because why uh i don't have enough health to deal with and we got a submarine right there i'm not going to deal with him yeah submarine look at that just disappears goes into space and disappears off the map i i don't understand there's nothing you can do about it you can't detect him you can't shoot him even if he was on this periscope depth can't kill him uh, I don't have depth charges that can uh, go. I have to drive over him to use my weapon system. That's unheard of. Uh, and especially at the game, the nature of the game doesn't allow for that, right? I mean, in World War II, you see destroyers driving over submarines that had 20 people shooting at you. No, I mean, you were, the shore could do whatever it wants at will because nobody was shooting at them. So you could drive over submarines to do that. Just watch the movie Greyhound. Imagine if Tom Hanks and Greyhound had to literally dodge shells being shot at him by battleships, carriers, and everything, <laughs> all while trying to hunt a submarine. Yeah, it would the movie would be over really fast. All right, let's see the Zal here. Now, the other powerful thing is the Clebear has great AP. So AP in a broadside of a cruiser. Sometimes you might even citadel them if you hit it right. So, okay, he is down to 5,000. We hit our reload booster. 
15 seconds of raw gun power, 50% of reload. Look at two and a half second reload. Very, very powerful. Imagine if this thing had that two and a half seconds the whole time. And here we get it. Boom, there it is. Splash one, or splash two, that is. 16,897, and that is, that's how we kill that guy. And uh, what are we going to do with the Conqueror here? Do I want to take a shot at him? Let me think about it. Let's see if he gets down to 20. Ooh, he's getting down to 26. That's not bad. That's not bad. Somebody keep fighting. Uh, he's not looking at us, so his guns are facing the Minotaur. So let's go ahead and see if we can start a fire. Let's see the capability, fire starting capability of the Kleber. It is very, very strong. I would say it's um, close to that of the Kabarovs and Gdansk. I mean, the guns are, again, four turrets firing uh, double barrels, uh, shooting the 139 millimeter. Fire chance is a little bit better, 11%. Let's see if we can get one going here. I mean, that, that's all it takes is one fire, and then he's got to figure out what he's going to do. He's, and now, the thing I hate about the Conqueror, it's got the, uh, the repair teams where it just repairs the entire ship, literally almost. It's like they got a whole team out there on the deck just rebuilding the ship. Here we go. Let's see, we got one fire. It looks like he might have fire prevention because he's only got one, all his entire superstructures engulfed in flames, so I know that I can't start another superstructure fire. So let's see if we can get another fire in the back. Okay, he finally fires at us. But we're going to keep firing at him and making sure that we get some damage on him. Oh, we take a hit. I, I cannot afford to fire right now. Let's see if we can nail him. Come on. Oh, we oh back to it. Uh, fired and do don't fight. Don't hit us. Please don't hit us. And, and he, oh, of course he gets a fire on us. I hate that. Don't you? Anyways, we he gets taken down by Columbus because we were more distracting. Because why? We were annoying. We're at 581,000 damage, potential damage. This is not a good representation of the game. I think I could have gotten more potential damage, but I had to stop firing because of my health problem. So I didn't have enough health to deal with it. So pretty much this is the rest of the game. Uh, yeah, is it annoying? Yeah, how are you going to track down a fast 55 knot club air? I mean, now I'm just going to go in and cap this spot right here. And uh, let's see if I can get it in time before the Kremlin comes around the corner. Again, very, very annoying. How are you going to deal with a, 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 the... Uh, now, if you do the legendary uh, Club Air, you can get 6.2 kilometer detection, and you can really go YOLO and use the torpedoes that are very powerful up close and personal. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm detected out to 7.8, so they'll spot me from the moon, and they'll have time to turn their guns and get me. So let's take... Ooh, he gets a nice shot from the Columbo. So let's say we can burn him down right here. And again, here's the another aspect of the Club Air, a fast-running kiting away uh, destroyer, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. And he's pretty much... His guns are out of position. He's out of position, and we're literally just going to try to start a fire on him. And get this game over with right here. Uh, again, the guns are easy to aim. There's that fire we're talking about right there, and he doesn't have any damage cons. And Kansas takes out the Hawk. And we da she damage con. Never mind. He did damage con. Now the problem with the torpedoes they only go eight kilometers. So yeah, there they go. They go out. But don't worry. We've got the guns, and boom, he goes down, splash three. So we did our part right there. We did as much as we could, and literally there was nothing you could do about it. And I don't think I got up to one million. Like I said. Nobody else is firing at me. The re the game is pretty much over now because uh, they're going to cap all the points. They kill everybody. We're the last one alive. And why this is so... Um, yeah, this is pretty much a, a loss for us. But hey, we did it. Look, we can run on the map and try to cap every point, but there's only so much you can do. And pretty much the game just runs out based on points right there. So there you go. Club Bear little bit slower on the gun reload you can do you can still be effective in that regard but it just i wish it had a better reload maybe buff a little bit and have that engine that reload booster a little bit better but again the reason why they gave the reload booster because they said the, the reload is so bad anyways we did our best right there so what are your thoughts guys what do you think out of the seeing the four videos i showed you there or from your personal experience fighting against these destroyers which one is actually the best and at being the most <laughs> annoying uh, destroyer out there to play against? So let's take a look at it and see uh, what's the final verdict from my point of view. And then you guys determine what you think in the comments below. Okay, so we're back. Uh, so what do you guys think? What do you think was the most annoying destroyer out there? Is it the Gdansk or is it the uh, Kabarovsk? Is it right there? Is it the Kabarovsk? Is it the Marceau? Or is it the Club Air? So Marcel and Club Air are pretty much just almost identical, just different guns, right? Uh, for me personally, I think at this time, at the current state of the game right now in August of 2024, uh, I'll have to say for me personally, I think the Kabrovsk is probably the one of the most annoying, ridiculous destroyers out there, especially with the legendary upgrade. And again, if you don't know, in the 1930s, uh, you can read it right here. 
Uh, this year is 1939. The idea of an armored leader became a subject of discussion once again, resulting in technical specification being drawn up. The design known as Project 47 was never imp implemented, but that's what the project was. To me, this is like the Kremlin of uh, destroyers. It's heavily armored. It's got big ass guns. It reloads great. It's in the back shooting. It's got long range. I mean, look at the artillery shells, 14.9, as you saw earlier. Look, you get better reload time with this legendary mod, 6%. Main battery firing is plus 10%. You can still build for main battery upgrade here. Um, the downside is you can spot this thing from the moon. The concealment is 8.7, so everything out detects it. But what really makes it sh shine is the specialized repair teams. It's just literally a zombie ship. You try to kill this thing, it keeps coming back at you, and it's keep hitting harder. The more you shoot at it, the better its adrenaline rush is kicking in, and it's lobbing shells like crazy. And this engine boost is just ridiculous. It, things can dodge and juke shells like crazy. And especially if you have uh, loot, um, Kutsnef on it, uh, Kutsnef, Kut? Kutsnuff? Yeah, Kutsnuff. It has that, I mean, it literally comes back from the dead. I mean, this emergency reserve thing where as soon as I get almost dead here, boom, it's, it heals with everything on. It, it makes it harder to shoot at, and then you get a healing uh, for 15 seconds. So <laughs> this thing is just ridiculous and tough to kill. That's my personal opinion on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, hope you guys are doing well out there. Let me know your thoughts in uh, the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments and uh, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. If you see value in the channel, uh, let us know how you feel in the buttons below. And as always, hope you guys are uh, being safe out there if you see me out there say hello trying to make this uh, a better form a better community a lot of hate out there a lot of toxicity i definitely wish you guys uh the best and uh let me know as always and at uh, 4,000 subs we'll do a premium giveaway so hope you guys are doing well take care and we'll see you soon cheers